In uh, week three of Creating Significant Learning Environments course 5313, we're going to be focusing on uh, one of the most important activities, and that is the construction of a three column table for your course design or a course map. So you're going to develop a big, hairy, audacious goal and a three column table. And it's essentially the same. Um, methodology that is being used all throughout the DLL program in all your courses you're you um, in the course syllabus you should be noticing a three column table so for example this week's outcomes um, and the the main course outcome the big hairy audacious goal learners will identify and incorporate constructive series to create implement significant digital learning environments and the module objectives for this week after completing this module, the learner will be able to analyze the learning environments, so on and so forth. If you take a look, look at the syllabus, you'll see that, here we go, this is a big, hairy, audacious course level goal, learning outcome. And if we look at the three column table, um, we are noticing that in the integration stage, these two components, um, these two outcomes are what identify what you're doing this week. Analyzing your learning environment, determining the situational factors that will impact learning, and then creating a um, significant learning environment um, that has an emphasis on goals or outcomes uh, that effectively align with um, assessment and activities. Okay, so um, this three column table that you see in this course and you've seen in all the other courses um, is what you're going to be building in this particular week. Now, uh, another place that you can take a look at all the three column tables is if you go to my website and you go to the uh, course mapping page, you'll notice that, um, um, you know, for 5305, you've got a three column table here, 5304, three column table, 5313. I encourage you to take a look at all three three column tables, um, especially uh, if you've done 5305, take a look at that. Uh, if you've done 5304, take a look at that because having gone through a course, you'll have a sense of how everything works. And you'll see how things fit a little bit better. Um, take a look, obviously take a look at 5313 as you go through this course. It'll be quite important for you to, to do that. Okay, so um, so when you take into account what's happening this week, these learning outcomes came out of the um, three column table. Um, as you're preparing to do this work, it's going to be extremely important that you use Fink's summary of his self-directed guide for course design. And the whole Fink's taxonomy uh, is what we're using to build that three column table, right? Foundational goals, application, integration, uh, human dimension, caring, and learning how to learn. Uh, all these pieces are part of Fink's taxonomy. Um, I've modified Fink's taxonomy to incorporate a big heritageous goal or a big goal, which will help provide the context. And it's something that, that you're going to be running into in 5304 uh, in terms of a why statement and so this bigger broader perspective of a goal is extremely important now when you take a look at the actual assignment itself we are asking you to build a three column table big hairy audacious goal at the top three column table that aligns outcomes activities and assessment you'll also notice that we are asking you to um, work through a situational factors outline and then work through the questions for formulating significant learning goals. These two uh, documents are designed to help you think about the things that you need to think about when you're building your three column table. It's going to help you clarify your thinking. The questions for formulating significant learning goals will help you to pull together what those goals would be, in addition to taking a look at the examples. right? We ask you to include these simply from the perspective of this is your works. Uh, you're, you're, you're showing your work if, if you're showing a mathematical equation. Um, the emphasis of what you're submitting is a three-column table. And we, we encourage you to use the, the actual three-column table format um, that, that uh, you see in the course that we have here. Um, now, 
this has to be aligned to your innovation plan. It, uh, the course that you're building should be a unit long, um, at least a month duration. You have to have a long enough period of time where uh, it can actually be implemented. Ideally, I would look for a little bit longer period of time, a semester, minimum of a month to two months. Um, you know, that type of a period would be um, ideal. Um, but a, a full unit or at least a semester base so that it's big and broad enough so that you can take a look at what's going to be happening. The other extremely important factor here is that you want to look at building um, a project-based course. And what I mean by a project-based course is that it, it has to fit the category of outcomes-based instruction. If you're going to be testing people with a test or having people write a paper, things like that, that's competency-based. We want you to move into a project-based thinking, an outcomes-based thinking perspective. So you want to have a bigger perspective. Think about your innovation plan. So if you're building an innovation plan where you're setting up a blended learning environment, well, this would be a, a, a course that you're teaching in that blended learning environment. Or if you are working um, in, in another capacity with makerspaces, this might be a makerspace course for the teachers and students together, right? Something along those lines. Um, you know, if you're working in the capacity where you are looking at doing some focusing on support and professional development, well, this would be um, the professional development course that you're going to be taking people through. Right, so this has to be an actual body of instruction, a course or a program or some type of instruction, some type of a unit you're going to take people through. It has to be a real project. If you're working in in any type of a capacity, the more genuine and authentic it is, the more effective that this will be. Okay, so this, these are the key key parameters. Just want to make sure you're clear on that. Now let's take a look at some examples. Um, obviously, the example page um, again on my website, the program map page. Um, I, it, there's a three-column table, and again, I would encourage you to look at the example of, of this course, 5305, 5304, and then we've got several examples of the big hairy dish just going three-column table that um, I'm going to identify. We're going to be looking at Kaylee, Di Diana, and Carl Moans. Uh, as examples. And so uh, Kaylee uh, has a wonderful example of a project where her students are going to be building a or planning um, and presenting a proposal and building a three-dimensional rendering of a playground that they're going to submit to the Board of Education uh, that is going to be built at, in their school. This is a grade four class. So this is grade four. They're going to be specking out and building or proposing the building of a particular playground. And if you take a look at the foundational goals, you're, you're looking at things like identifying playground equipment, analyzing current playground equipment strengths, weaknesses, application, you're, you're generating a list of components and looking at how a construction is made. Um, the integration is building a 3D uh, rendering of what the playground would be uh, look like, and this is being done with uh, Scratch, it's a software package. Um, evaluating other designs, and so there's a bit of a, a collaborative environment where different groups are working on different designs or sharing these ideas. You'll know Notice in the learning activities, um, all things are done electronically. Things are going into Google, going into the uh, ePortfolio. Uh, you know they're building stuff. Um, you know the the learning how to learn uh, is taking and proposing this and sharing this uh, with a formal review um, and submitting their um, uh, proposals. Uh, 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 that can be that will actually be built right and so all these components um, the assessment part of all these uh, things are really the different stages of, as they go along you know the model itself and the integration is assessment um, the uh, the video posts that they're creating the proposal all these are are different stages along the way if you think of the whole idea of the uh, learning mapping learners journey um, these are different stages along the way to building that that plan okay so again wonderful example um, it's a steam unit and it's an alignment of out outcomes activities and assessment and Kaylee does have a link to uh, her supporting documents, I believe. Um, actually, in her case, she didn't use them because she's been working with this for for uh, for quite a while. Um, some students include them, some don't. Um, you know, here's uh, 
uh, Deanna has a similar type of an explanation. Um, she's linking to the different resources. She's posted a link to the three column, sorry, to the uh, Fink's taxonomy. Here, she's got a big hairy dacious goal. Uh, equip her colleagues uh, with the tools to create an active, engaging um, makerspace. Okay, and so this is all about building the makerspace. This is working with teachers to build the makerspace. What's going to be involved? Analyzing the maker approach in the foundational. So what is it? How does it work? The application, uh, looking at what's available and planning and looking at using the library in a creative way as an application. Integration. Now, uh, you'll notice there's an integration part one, part two. Uh, I'm I'm hesitant to, I, I caution you on doing that. I, I, I just focus on one integration if at all possible. Um, but if this is a bigger project, you might look at different stages. So you, you could look at integration one, integration two. Um, the human dimension caring and learning how to learn. Look at all these factors, right? The key thing here, this is all associated with building the makerspace. What's involved in building the makerspace? And then if you take a look at the activities, um, the assessment, the assessment is really what what do you create um, at that step of the process, right? Um, building uh, takeaways from resources, having a proposal, mapping out the space, creating presentations, graphics, sharing the resources, all these things. So you know this is this is real world activities that that are extremely important. So this is a makerspace example. Uh, the final example is uh, from the world of social study, uh, high school. And uh, the big hairy dacious goal here is, you know, looking at um, uh, global issues and identifying key themes in civilization, civilization and how these themes continue to influence the contemporary world. So history. History repeats itself. The influences of history in the past, how are they realized today? Uh, it's a wonderful project-based activities, um, looking at different things, analyzing conditions of the different civilizations. Um, now, I, here's something I want to caution you on. Um, Carl isn't following the, the, the linear format. He put down foundational and learning how to learn. Ideally, I would encourage you to put the learning how to learn towards the end because it sort of helps to pull ideas together. He's got an example. Uh, he, he's using um, multiple integrations because this is actually a bigger, um, this is a long, long project. This is a very big unit. This is, I think, a half a year type of an activity. So this is a little bit bigger. And so the different integrations are different stages, right? Different phases and different aspects of the whole unit, how they're taking a look at different things and analyzing an event in the past and how does it relate to what's happening today, right? Um, past, how does it relate today, right? So it's making a connection between the past and, and the present um, all the way along, right? And then you can see that the students are, you know, compiling a variety of activities, uh, um, different projects um, as they go along uh, to realize these um, the goals here. So this is this is an example of a social studies or a civics class um, that uh, I, I think worked out quite well. But again, I want to caution you: be careful about having too many integrations. This works because it's a very very large and lengthy project. But I I, I try to fit it within the sort of six constraints, the six modules, the big hairy dacious goal, and the six modules. Um, and I think you'll you'll be good to go. Now again. Um, uh, uh, Carl um, didn't overemphasize the worksheets, and that's fine. Um, uh, I I don't mind not seeing them. I would encourage you to include those. That way, if there are any issues, I can help identify what you might want to be able to adjust. Um, so, you know, Deanna included hers. But again, the emphasis is building this three-column table and then introducing it and sharing it on your website so that it fits within a context of what you're doing. Obviously, the references are in place. So this, this is a um, uh, one of the course design uh, methodologies that you're going to be exposed to. Next week you're going to be taking a look at understanding by design, um, but this is really purely outcomes based and um, we encourage you to use this opportunity to explore a different way of thinking and a different way of designing um, from a backward design perspective. The, these are all backward design models. The, UB, uh, the UBD model next week is also similarly a backward design model, but Fink's taxonomy is a more classic backward design model because you're looking at the big 
big hairy audacious goal or the way that we've modified Fink's taxonomy to fit into what we're doing that big hairy audacious goal becomes that goal that you're working towards that journey point this is where you're going and then you know the different uh, foundational application integration you know human dimension carrying these other um, outcomes help get you to that ultimate goal. So uh, looking forward to seeing how you implement these ideas in your innovation plan and make, making the connection to what you're doing with your innovation planning process. So we're looking forward to seeing what you come up with.